Hi, Jackie Vanderlearn. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Chinese organ clock. This is just a super cool tool that you can use in your everyday life to know when um, and what you should do to support your organ systems, and then how to tell if things are out of balance based upon what time your symptoms are showing up. So for instance, if you're waking up every day between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., that's the liver time. And so you know that if you're constantly waking up at night at that time and having a hard time falling asleep, your liver is probably out of balance. Alternatively, say you can't fall asleep and it's like that 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. time, so that's the time of the gallbladder. You might know that it's a gallbladder issues going on and then if you support your gallbladder, you can actually help to bring that back into a state of balance. Additionally, like you don't want to eat a huge meal right before you go to bed because you want your gallbladder to be able to process and digest fats, which is its primary job. Now, each of the organs also have emotional, um, emotional components to them. So the gallbladder's emotion is about having the courage to move towards your dreams, so really going after what you want. People who have gallbladder issues oftentimes don't know what they want, or they don't have the energy or the courage to go after what they truly dream of. They may actually help other people along their path, but forget about themselves in the process. And so then that can show up as gallbladder issues in your body. Additionally, those people might tend to um, move towards passive aggressiveness or, or, or victim, being a victim or blaming people for other things. Um, as we move into, say, like 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., it's the time of the stomach. The stomach has to do with the emotion of worry. So if you're not worried, you tend to feel ground and calm, uh, grounded and calm. But if you aren't grounded and calm, you may have worry, you may like have ruminating thoughts, things like that going on, and it can actually um, have, cause issues with your stomach. So you might feel nauseous, you might feel like you know you have butterflies in your stomach all the time, or you may have stomach issues. The stomach is actually really important for the digestion of protein. So if you are constantly in a state of worry, your body may not be digesting protein well. And if you don't digest protein well, that eventually can lead to food allergies and things like that. Um, and so the whole, everything in your body is so connected. Um, and so the time of the stomach is 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So that is a really good time of the day to eat your first um, high protein meal. So even though it's really popular nowadays to um, do intermittent fasting or things like that, I would actually recommend that you start your meals at that between that 7 and 9 a.m. and then stop eating earlier in the day, maybe around like 2 or 4 or something like that if you want to do intermittent fasting because your stomach really does need that protein to digest and that will actually help it stay in balance. So let's go for another little time period. Say we have um, 1 to 3 p.m. is the small intestine. So that's a really good time after you eat lunch. Generally, um, in a lot of cultures, it's um, really common to eat a huge lunch and then take a little siesta. So it's a great time for you to take a little nap. It's between that 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. time. Let your small intestines kind of digest that food that you just ate. And then you can get re, um, rejuvenated for the rest of the day. Another time we might have here is 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. has to do with the kidneys. So if you find like every day you're just exhausted by 5 to 7 p.m., that can be a signal that your kidneys are out of balance. Additionally, sometimes when the kidneys are out of balance, you also get this um, urge to overwork. So you might find yourself doing overtime, working too much, things like that. So if you find yourself that you just can't shut off work, um, a lot of times like your day is over around 5 or 6, and you just can't shut it off, then that can be a sign of a kidney balance too. Kidneys have to do with the emotion of fear. And so you might fear that if you stop working that everything's going to fall apart. Or if you're not working hard enough that you're not going to be successful enough. Or things like that. Um, as we go into 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. is the triple burner. Triple burner is an organ I don't really talk about in the five elements class. Or too much because it's kind of this, um, it's this a little bit more... Um, out there, it's not really even an organ, it's kind of more this body cavity place. And it's about keeping all of your, um, everything that goes on within your torso going. So it's like you're taking in food and then you're digesting it and then you're eliminating it. And so it has to do with like metabolism and hormonal regulation and stuff like that. But that's from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's a time when you really should be like winding down. The triple burner's out of balance. You can have a lot of um, go into that fight, flight, or freeze. A lot has a lot to do with that stress mechanism. So 
9 p.m. to 11 p.m. is the time you should be like winding down, turning off the lights, getting ready for bed, kind of like going back into that parasympathetic state. So but if you're not doing that and things are just wound up, you're going to find that your cortisol levels are off. So instead of cortisols going down at night, you might get a spike and then you can't get to sleep and you have insomnia. So you can really use this clock in a lot of different ways. Another time we have is 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. is the large intestine. So the large intestine is about the emotions of letting go. It's also a really good time to have your first bowel movement. So ideally, you would wake up, you've processed and digested things throughout the night, throughout your dreams, and in this state of like rest and relaxation. So now it's time to let all of that go. So first thing in the morning, you should get up, have to have a bowel movement, go about your day, start breakfast, and all of those things. Now, most of us are off balance. Most of us don't get up in the morning and have our first bowel movement. But if you can kind of get your body used to that and kind of um, stay on this like schedule that's more conducive for balance and harmony in your body, you can really find that things will, will actually start working better everywhere. Um, another time we might have, let's just look here, 7, to 9, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is a pericardium. Pericardium is about love and connection and um, circulation. So 7 to 9 p.m. is a time that you might like go out with friends or connect with your um, sweetie or your kids or whoever it is in your life that you care about. So it's a good time to make that time for love and connection to help you calm down. The pericardium is about being calm and um, warm hearted and those types of things. And so if the pericardium is out of balance, you might just feel anxious or, um, or just feel like things are out of balance or, or things are kind of out of control. Another time, let's see here, let's look at, we did the liver. So the lungs is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So if you find that you're waking up between that time and you don't want to, it can be because of sadness and grief. So sadness and grief can overtake you um, and then you just have a hard time sleeping between those times. So ideally, if you're dealing with grief, you know, you should definitely deal with it. You don't want to like block or suppress those emotions, but really grieve. And then there should be a time when, when that grieving is over and you can get back to the state of like zest for life and vitality, which is what the lungs are all about. And so if you don't have that zest for life or that vitality, if you're feeling very apathetic or sad or, or grieving, then you might find that you're just waking up between those times. Additionally, all these things, when you have imbalances will show up on your face. So if things are showing up with your lungs, you might have some redness or rosacea or things like that going on within your face. If you're feeling a lot of apathy in your life, you might notice that your skin is just kind of dull. Um, or you might have hyperpigmentation if you're having a hard time letting go of things. Um, if you're having an issues with your large intestine, you might notice that these lines are very deep and etched in your face. With the spleen, which has to do with digesting, digesting life, um, and also supporting yourself and really loving yourself and lifting yourself up, if the spleen's out of balance, you might notice that your jowls are kind of saggy or you might have some lines above your lips. Um, if the liver's out of balance, you might notice a lot of redness or tension. You might have some extra puffiness underneath of your eyes or jaw tension in through here. So all of these things I've put on this um, the little flyer that I've given you as well so you can kind of see some of the things that have to do with each of the organs. If the bladder's out of balance, you might notice some puffiness or redness within your chin. A lot of times when people have UTIs, they'll get a breakout right on their chin. Um, or they might have this line above their chin that indicates that they're just working too hard. That can have an issue, that be an issue with the um, kidneys, bladder, or water element. So this is a really cool clock that you can just look at. If you're having things going on in your life, if you're feeling more anxious at a certain time, tired at a certain time, digestive issues at a certain time, Look at the clock and see what time that is, and then notice if you feel like you are out of balance on, with that organ. Um, and if you haven't already taken my five elements class, I talk a lot about the different organs and organ systems, the emotional components, the physical components. So what might be showing up in your body physically, what's going on emotionally, and then how can you work with facial reflexology to bring your body back into that state of balance? Really important these days, particularly in that emotional level, because we do have so much stress going on. And if we don't deal with that stress, it's gonna show up in our body physically. And if it shows up in our body physically, then we end up having to deal with that physical issue. And that takes a lot of time out of our day. It can take a lot of money. I know like medical bills can be super, super expensive. And so if you deal with that emotional component, 
and then know how to deal with that physical component. And additionally, you're going to be able to help yourself, help your family, help your friends to deal with whatever is going on, especially as we're going through this period of additional stress that we've already been dealing with the last couple of years. And then coming up more and more and more as we're dealing with inflation and everything costing more and um, harder, harder to find workers and just all the stuff that's going on that really is affecting so many people in their emotional and mental health as well. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope that you are subscribed to my emails so that you do get this little pamphlet in here so you can read a little bit more about that Chinese organ clock and kind of have some better understanding of your body, why your body's doing the things that it does, and then what can, you can do to help it. As always, thank you for watching. Please pass this along to anybody who can use it today and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.